Season 8 of Game of Thrones was a disaster. A total dumpster fire. The only thing saving the entire franchise to me is the Song of Ice and Fire miniature game for Cool Mini or Not. This tabletop war game allows me to return to a version of Westeros without plot armor, abandoned storylines, and broken character arcs. To re-experience action from events like the Battle of the Bastards, the Gold Train Ambush, and that battle at Winterfell. There is just one water bottle left on set size problem. Flat, cardboard terrain. 2D trees and walls lower the game's immersion and can be difficult to distinguish from afar. There was an exclusive terrain set that launched with the Kickstarter back in 2018, but the steep price tag kept me away. Today, the set is nearly impossible to find, and the price has only increased. So instead, I will be upgrading these cardboard pieces into my own 3D versions of the terrain, while attempting to spend under the original $74 price tag. Can I do it? Did I do it? I, I can't remember. But I have all my receipts, and I will make sure to find out before the end of the series. Now let's get started with the woodland terrain set. I'm starting with the forest token. I'll be using pre-made trees that I got on sale because it will be cheaper and faster than building my own from scratch. To make the trees removable, I'll be using the supplied objective tokens and their housing. I pop out the objective tokens and cut the spruce to size. Using my Dremel, I sand the sides of the token and the inside of the circular sprue. This will allow the trees to be removed easier. I hot glued each tree to an objective token, then made a seal around its base. Using the tip of the glue gun, I flattened the seal and surrounded the base of the tree. I aligned the circular sprues over the printed trees and glued them down. I also glued down some extra pieces of cardboard to make the base less flat. The trees pop in and don't fall over when the piece is moved. The seams of the cardboard were a little too sharp, so I sanded them down with my Dremel. Next, using spackle I found at the dollar store. I covered the entire piece. I used the spackle to blend the raised cardboard areas and to give the entire base some undulation. Once the spackle dried, it was time for basing. The way I base is by using regular dirt that I found outside and mixing it with water and glue. I have a super secret dirt patch that gives me a fine powder and pebble blend. I then add this with the uh, equal parts water and the white PVA glue and wood glue mix. The entire composition is stirred together and applied with an old brush. This is how I based all the terrain pieces as well as the bases for each of my individual troops, so I wanted to keep things consistent. When basing the forest, I had to make sure that none of the glue got into these circular holes or else the trees wouldn't fit correctly. I also had to base the trees by themselves so they wouldn't get stuck. Once the glue was dry, I took it outside and spray painted it with a brown 2-in-1 paint primer that resembles the Citadel color Rhinoxide. The spray paint will also help to hold down the base. Now it's on to the bog. The majority of the bog was built out of EVA foam. EVA foam is a high-impact open-cell foam that comes in sheets and is used for home gym flooring. I like using EVA foam because it can be sanded and it creates a super strong bond when you use hot glue. Tracing the bog template on foam, I cut a piece to size. I then cut it into smaller pieces and overlap it on top of the raised areas printed on the bog, while leaving the lower areas blank because I'll be adding water to them later. I get out my Dremel again and sanded down the edges of the bog. When sanding EVA foam, you have to wear a dust mask because you really don't want to breathe this stuff in. After sanding, I covered everything in spackle to seal the foam. Once the spackle dried, I carefully based it and then spray painted it brown. For the hedges, I used Kraft Peat Moss. This is a dried moss that keeps its color and it's kind of spongy. I pulled apart pieces of the moss and placed them down directly over the hedges printed on the token. The more pieces of moss I used, the more organic the shape of the hedges looked. While I could have stopped there, I decided to use a piece of floral foam that I found at the dollar store. I put the foam inside of a bag and crushed it into a powder. The bag keeps it from going everywhere and getting into my lungs. Then using a spray adhesive, I sprayed the moss and dusted it with foam powder to create a flocked look and to blend in gaps. Next, I spackled the flat base a bit and covered it in dirt and spray painted the whole thing. 
Instead of using brown, I used a dark green because I didn't like the way the flocked moss looked, and it would give it some more depth if there was another color involved. This now brings us to painting. I painted the bases for this set the same way I painted the bases for my troops, by using a four-step Citadel paint scheme. The first layer is Rhinoxide, which I achieved by using the brown spray paint. Next is a dry brushing of Morphang Brown to create depth, then a highlight dry brushing of Taloran Sand. And finally, I used Administerum Gray to touch up the larger exposed rocks. I had to touch up the base of the hedges with Rhinoxide since it was spray painted green. Once dry, I brushed on Morphang Brown, and then Taloran Sand. This really brought out the raised areas of the bog. Then using a very wiry brush, I touched the exposed rocks with Administerum Gray. To create the water in the bog, I started with some Cantor Blue that I watered down and then mixed with PVA glue. Adding more water to help mix it together, the glue was poured into the recessed areas. This could be done with resin, but I wanted to keep costs down. The blue dried pretty dark, so I went back with a highlight of Elysian Green. I didn't want it to be too green, so I used paper towel to remove excess. Then I hit everything with Nullin Oil, but this removed the water shine. So I did one more final layer of just PVA glue. I tried to paint it on in circles to create a rippled water look. Once everything was dry, it was time to add static grass and tufts from the army painter. And then we were done. I was happily surprised by the dollar store spackle, and the flocking on the hedges really make them stand out. I hope you liked watching this process, because in the next episode I will be building all the fortification pieces found in the starter set. It's going to be a lot of sharpening sticks.